Hi everyone, this is YML and today we are going to talk about why ReLU is better than other activation functions like 10H or Sigmoid and why it is mostly used in modern deep neural networks. So let's recap a little bit about what are the most used activation functions. So first of all, we have obviously ReLU, which is the subject of today. And what it does is to output zero if the input is lower than zero and output the value of the input if the input is higher than zero. Here we have like the mathematical definition, but this is like equivalent of taking like, okay, so you have like ReLU of x equals to maximum between zero and x. Again, this is another definition that you might find on the internet of ReLU. And here on the bottom right, we have the tanh function. And what it does is to take an input between minus infinity and plus infinity and map it to an output that is bounded between minus one and plus one. And how it does that, basically for values that are a lot on the negative side, so very high numbers on the negative side, the output will tend towards minus one. And for values that are very high and are positive, the output will tend towards one. And here, close to zero, we have a quite steep increase from minus one to plus one. And finally, we have the sigmoid activation function here on the top right. And what it does again as the tan h is to take values between minus infinity and plus infinity and map these values between zero and one. So it acts in a quite similar way, but this time the output becomes zero when the values are very high and on the negative side and the output becomes close to one when the values are very high but on the positive side and again around the value zero we have a little less steep increase for from zero to one okay and now let's see what are the problems with the two activation functions here on the right and why aren't they used as activation functions usually in uh, neural networks so let's begin by taking the derivative of each function and let's see from there what conclusions we can take so let's take the derivative of relu so the derivative of relu here on the left side on the negative side we have again a gradient equal to zero here. And here on the right, on the positive side, we have a derivative equal to one. Uh, also, there is a slight problem for ReLU because uh, for the zero value, it has no derivative there, but there are ways of mitigating this problem in practice. Okay, and now let's take the derivative of tan h over here. So the derivative of tan h takes a value of zero for values that are very high on the negative side. And also the derivative takes a value of zero for values that are very high and on the positive side. Basically, it takes a derivative of zero when the output is very close to one or minus one and when the input value is uh, very close to zero around here so around i don't know like minus one and one the derivative of tan h becomes basically uh, non-zero here so when we are applying the back propagation algorithm we get like a learning signal only between here and here we basically get like a zero learning information from our derivative 
and mostly the same mathematics also apply to the derivative of the sigmoing function so when we have values that are very negative we have a derivative close to zero and when we have values that are very high on the positive side we have again a derivative equal to zero and we get the derivative that is non-zero only when we have an input value around the value of zero so only when we are around like this interval here so basically i know around minus five and five and from my understanding and please correct me if i'm wrong but Redu became quite popular uh, when it was applied in this paper a uh, quite famous one ImageNet classification with deep convolutional neural networks and in this paper, the authors compared the convergence time of the ReLU activation in comparison with the TANAGE activation. And they observed a six times faster convergence for ReLU than the convergence rate for TANAGE. And yeah, here we have this graph here. Basically, this is the convergence rate of ReLU. And this dot here is the convergence rate for tan H. And they blame this difference in convergence time between ReLU and tan H basically because of the saturating nonlinearities that appear when we take the derivative of tan H when we have very high values either on the positive or the negative side. And again, these saturating values for the derivative makes the training much slower in comparison with the non-saturating non-linearities of the rel function here. Because basically for rel you have either a zero derivative or a one derivative. Here is on the negative side and this one is on the positive side. And in comparison, if we employ the tanage function, then our network will be in some way forced to produce values that are very close to zero. Because if we have like very high values, then we would not get a learning signal from uh, that activation and this in some way like forces the network to not learn so fast because if it would find like a very meaningful feature on which it activates like with a very high value over here then unfortunately you would get like no learning signal from the thing that it might have discovered there in addition, there is another advantage of using ReLU over TANAGE or SIGMOID and this is that taking the computing the operation maximum between 0 and X is much much faster than let's say computing the operation e to the power of X that is used in both TANAGE and SIGMOID functions. As always, I would like to thank you for watching this video and I hope that you gain a better understanding of why the ReLU activation function has become so popular. And if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like to it. And until next time, I hope that you will have a great time and see you soon. Bye bye.